Hey, thanks for joining me for uh, this lecture on the Commerce Clause. So in this lecture, we're going to delve into the world of the Commerce Clause, and we're going to explain its significance as well as how it shapes the government's ability to regulate businesses. So let's get started. I'm going to first start by introducing the Commerce Clause. Now, the Commerce Clause is a crucial provision found in the United States Constitution. Specifically, you can find it in Article 1, Section 8, and I believe Clause 3. Now, it grants Congress the power to regulate commerce among the states with foreign nations as well as with Native American tribes. Now, this grant of authority has very far-reaching implications for how the government regulates businesses operating within the U.S. In terms of its importance, the Commerce Clause plays a very important role in ensuring a unified and regulated economic system across the country. It empowers Congress to enact laws and regulations that promote fair competition, try to eliminate trade barriers, as well as maintain sort of a level playing field amongst the states. Now, this authority extends to various aspects of business operations, including labor standards, environmental regulations, transportation, as well as telecommunications. So now that you understand a little bit about the Commerce Clause, as well as its importance, we're going to explore some of the different ways that the Commerce Clause affects the way that government regulates businesses. Now, one of the significant effects of the Commerce Clause is the regulation of interstate commerce. Now, Congress has the power to oversee economic activities that occur across state lines, and this is done to prevent individual states from enacting what we call protectionist measures or imposing some sort of burdensome regulation that hinders the flow of goods and services as well as capital. Now, this allows for a very consistent and predictable business environment for companies operating in multiple states with the idea of encouraging economic activity. Now, we know that a majority of our economic activity is as a result of business and consumers. And so when we have a system that encourages the free flow of goods and services, it allows for that activity to continue. The Commerce Clause also provides the constitutional basis for federal agencies to create and enforce regulations that impact businesses engaged in interstate commerce. These regulations cover diverse areas such as labor, consumer protection, product safety, environmental protection, as well as many others. Now, by establishing federal standards, the government can ensure the uniformity as well as the effectiveness of regulations that affect businesses operating across state boundaries. In addition to interstate commerce, the Commerce Clause also grants Congress the authority to regulate commerce with foreign nations. This power enables the federal government to negotiate trade agreements, establish tariffs or other import or export restrictions, and set rules and standards for international trade. It allows for the protection of national economic interests and the promotion of fair trade practices. The Commerce Clause also empowers the government to enact legislation that promotes economic stability as well as the general welfare of the nation. This authority is particularly significant, especially during times of national economic crises, as it enables Congress to take action to kind of mitigate as well as protect the interests of businesses and individuals. It also provides a basis for the regulation of financial markets and the protection of consumers from unfair practices. While the Commerce Clause grants broad regulatory powers to the federal government, it also helps to preserve a balance between state and federal authority. Now, this clause recognizes the importance of cooperative federalism, which is a concept that we're learning about this week, which allows the states to implement additional regulations as long as they don't unduly burden interstate commerce. Now, this arrangement ensures a degree of flexibility for states while trying to maintain a cohesive national economic framework. As we wrap up this video, I do want to emphasize that the Commerce Clause is a very uh, critical constitutional provision that empowers the government to regulate businesses as well as promote a fair and regulated uh, economic environment. At least that's the spirit of it. So through its authority over interstate commerce, federal regulations, international trade, economic stability, as well as the balance between state and federal powers, the goal for the Commerce Clause is to help shape the government's ability to oversee businesses operating within the United States. Through its authority over interstate commerce, federal regulations, international trade, 
economic stability, as well as the balance of power between state and federal entities, the Commerce Clause plays a very pivotal role in helping shape the government's ability to oversee businesses operating in the U.S. And as a result, it's an important element for businesses to be able to understand. All right, that's all I got. I hope this lecture has helped to deepen your understanding of this very significant constitutional provision, as well as improve your understanding of how it impacts the regulation of businesses. Thanks for watching.